So in the, in the previous video, we saw that we could calculate the net present value of two types of cash flows for two different alternatives. And we saw that going for lease is the best option instead of going for the spot price. But now the question is actually, when we are dealing with supply chains, there could be a few more different scenarios. So yeah, this idea is okay that there could be long-term contract of warehousing. Okay, that's fine. But then there could be mix of long-term and a spot market. And then there could be other different types of uncertainties with demand increase or, or price increase or decrease, these kind of issues because you know, we assume that demand will be same for all the three years, which is not likely the case. Demand can go up, down, price can go up, down. We can have different situations. Of course, again, we maybe will not be able to capture all of them, but we will be able to capture some of them. And that's at least good enough. You know? So now, and also there, based on those kind of issues, you know, we may would like to see how much capacity should we have in various facilities and what fraction of the capacity should be flexible, you know, this kind of issues we also want to see. So now we will be doing this using something called decision trees. It allows executives to estimate global currency instability, unpredictable commodity cost, uncertainty about customer demand, political unrest, this kind of issues, you know. We can now consider all these things in uh, estimating the expected profit from our supply chain design. So normally a decision tree is a graphic device used to evaluate decision under uncertainty. The first thing we have to do is identify the number and the duration of time periods. Be con normally considering two or three time period is okay. After that, it could be complex if you want to do it manually or uh, even using Excel. If you want to use like uh, four or five time periods, I would say you should consider some specialized software for decision making. But in this case, actually, we will solve it using Excel. So we will consider up to three time periods. And then the next idea, the next point is that you have to identify factors that will affect the value of the decision and which are likely to fluctuate over time. And evaluate decision, and then we finally evaluate decision using decision tree. So again, we can summarize it in five in six steps. The first one is identify duration of each period. It could be month, quarter, year, and the number of time period over which the decision will be evaluated. The second option, the second factor is identify factors which, whose fluctuations will be considered because there could be a few more different things that can fluctuate over time, but we will not be able to uh, actually uh, account for all of them, but we will consider the most important ones, okay? And then we also have to identify the probability of uncertainty. So these fluctuations, the probability of the fluctuations, we have to identify that as well. And we also have to consider a discount rate, periodic discount rate. And then finally, we present the decision tree with defined state in each of the period, as well as we look into the transition probabilities between the states in successive periods. Uh, finally, we will start with so normally when we make the decision tree, we start from period zero towards period T, the number of periods. But when we will be solving the decision tree, we start with the last period. So we start at last period, period T, and we work back to the first period, period zero. And then we identify the optimal decision and expected cash flow for each step, okay? So we will see how to do that. We will actually extend first the trip logistics example.